Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast. Today, we're going to be going over a topic related to for, uh, Warhammer 40k and modern media, TV, and film. However, due to the time of day we're forced to record this episode, we'll be missing our beloved Night Lord. And so, without further ado, I have once more been locked in a chamber with a surprisingly pleasant little orc and a professional personal trainer trying his best to train his facial hair to be something a little more than bum fluff. <laughs> I'm your host, Tom, and these are my co-hosts. Hello, everyone. My name is Lucas, or better known as Moots. Hello, hello. I'm Aaron. And that was fucking brutal, Tom. <laughs> it's quite funny because Moots was there when I wrote the... Um... So anyone who doesn't know, we, we, we kind of roast Aaron in the open and kind of got in the habit of that. I will argue it's his own fault, <laughs> but well, that's a story for another day. Arguable. Um, Very. Story for another day. Uh, so I was, sat, I was sat there and I was writing the thing for, 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 for Aaron, a little piss take at the beginning, and I said, Moots, what do you think about this? And I, I read it out to him, and he said, Tom... You don't really want to be mean, do you? And so what I just said was the nicer alternative. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to hear the other one now. <laughs> I can, I, I've still got it written down if you want it. I can redo the opening. I can, I can like fake redo the opening if you like. Sure. Yeah, let's roll it. Okay, well, let's go from... Oh, da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> so without further ado, I have once more been locked in a chamber with a surprisingly pleasant little orc and a man whose IQ is so low, it lowers our collective intelligence by being in his presence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah, kind of, yeah, I, I wish I didn't hit that now. I mean, <laughs> you literally ask for it. <laughs> oh my goodness, yep. Fucking <clears throat> asshole. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was trying to spare you, Aaron. I was trying to spare you. One of these days, I'm going to do the opening, and I'm going to roast the fuck out of you. Right. I look forward to it. I genuinely look forward to it, because then all bets are off, and I can say whatever I want. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Why don't we fucking... Why don't we rotate the opening? Yeah, no. oh, That's a good idea. I'm down for that. Saucy. I, I know exactly what I'll be doing in that case. But under, under the condition, <laughs> under the condition that someone gets fucking roasted every time. Yeah, I just oh. don't, don't know who, but someone fucking does. <laughs> easy peasy. We'll go left to right the whole time. I'll, I'll just do my entire opening in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that, Moots. Please don't do that. Och så ännu en gång har jag blivit inlåst i ett rum. Men... He's talking in tongues! He's talking in tongues! <laughs> Tom, I'll have to subtitle that now. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do uh, fake, fake subtitles. Did you see the, um, that, that meme going around about Filthy Frank? Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> Those, there are many. The, the, no, no, the one where it's, um, it's this Japanese guy, and he's basically just quickly reviewing a Filthy Frank video, and the subtitles are all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the subtitles are all wrong. He, the subtitles say something really silly, just something, something typically Frank and funny. Mm -hmm. But the Japanese guy says he didn't say that. <laughs> he said, uh, I'm just quite what the meme said. And the, 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 meme, the, guy said, the guy says, that's not what he said. He sort of looks into the camera, he looks dead in the camera. He says, There are two dead Jews in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's like, So Frank's been saying this horrific shit this entire time and just using the wrong subtitles this whole time. Just the oh, wrong subtitles. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, oh. I'll hear about that sooner, man. What the fuck? L ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I'm not, this isn't my own opinion. I'm just yeah, quoting what, what I know I certainly fell for that. <laughs> Any, anyways, Moots, if you. Um, <laughs> All right, all right. Every time you speak in Swedish on the podcast from now on, I'm I'm going to change your subtitles to things that are inappropriate. Oh, I'm gonna spend on that. This could be cool to see what they get the poor door. You are going to regret that. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> you're now a gigolo. You've just admitted to being a gigolo. Oh, no. <laughs> just the way the way you said that was like a little Fallout, or not Fallout, like, like a uh, Telltale Games bit. Just go in. Tom will remember this, or like you will regret that. <laughs> just in the yeah. fucking top left coming in. <laughs> Oh <laughs> god! Uh, but uh, so we have a. <laughs> what are we doing now again? <laughs> the models of the week, gentlemen. Ah, the models yes, of the week. yes, yes. Of I can't forget. Um, yes. So we have two wonderful models. Uh, one by Wild Bilbo, the Chaos Ogrin. Uh, one. It's actually an entire squad, and uh, just wonderful 
little kit bash uh, green stuff extravaganza. And no, uh, we've um, we've actually fe- fe- feared, we've feared, <laughs> <and> we've, <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've actually featured um, Wild Bilbo stuff on here before, and it was it was odd because. If you look at the kind of stuff he green stuffs and then his, the, the way he paints it, it's absolutely devastating that he's got such a small followership. Uh, mm. followership. Mm. You know? Um, the, the time, the effort, and the love that goes into it. And it's really strange. I don't know if either of you guys have had this thought when you're looking at his, his bits, but his work is kind of like a really, really natural blending of old hammer sort of proportions and colors with the more modern Warhammer stuff. Yeah. I don't mm. know if that's just a me thing. If, I, if that's just me who's seen that, but um, no. <laughs> while Bilbo, extremely impressive, extremely impressive. Go check him out. Follow him. It gives me very much like sort of Lovecraft style vibes a bit, and some of the way he does mm. bits. Like if you look at his tank, they did a while ago. Just to plug him a little bit, his um, the, the sort of like this pure altar look of that thing is immense. Yeah, and then all the little eyes and postures and things that shouldn't be. It's just really fucking lovely. I really like his work. Yeah, he and Emmanuel of the Lion should have a green stuff off where they just uh, see how how much green stuff they can both eat because I <laughs> well, feel like they oh eat. <laughs> well, I, I listen. I, I mean, Wild Bilbo is wonderful, but no one is outmatching Emmanuel on eating green stuff. It's just not possible. <laughs> he, he made his own wife out of green stuff. He eats that every day. Oh, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't eat it in the way you're thinking either. <laughs> no. He really likes his wife. <laughs> you know? He's going to be he's gonna be here next like next week or some shit, and he's going to fucking listen to this before that. <laughs> yes, we, we are recording. Assuming all goes to plan, we're recording with Manuel Aaron in a few days. Oh, bang it. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew what hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move on <laughs> to our other model of the week. Uh, this is a Abaddon conversion, Chaos Lord, um, World Eaters Chaos Lord by uh, Xander the Traveler. Xander's a really great, really great regular in our Discord. Mm. Uh, and he doesn't actually post too many models or too much modeling stuff. It's very sort of sparse with it. And so when he posted this, it was really, really nice to see, you know. Mm. A very simple kit bash, um, but also very sort of impactful and sort of gets the job done. It's yeah. just a crying shame that the only Chaos Lord World Eaters can take in 10th edition is Chaos Lords on Juggernaut. Um, <laughs> it's a tragedy. What the hell? All right. Well, you don't know that? No. You can proxy your Chaos Lords as Khan, but if you're a World Eaters player, you've already got Khan. Mm. It's a bit sad, really. Yeah, you can't take like Terminator or Chain Fist or anything. It's just depressing. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, I agree. It's a super nice one. It's uh, uh it's not too overly in your face with you know with the uh, with the bits, uh, but it just uh, meshes together really well. Well, this is it. One of the things that I mean, a lot of people have problem with Abaddon conversions because they all still look like Abaddon. Mm. Uh, you know, and uh, whilst this doesn't. Well, I was about to say whilst yeah, absolutely. Whilst I understand what they mean. This, this is the thing. The great thing about world eaters, it doesn't matter what it is. You paint it red and you give it an axe, and it doesn't matter what it was before. Mm. It's going to be a world eater. Yeah, you know uh, that true. will be your first thought. Mm-hmm. But a little little thing that I think I'd be uh, remiss not to mention is a subtle detail on this this kit bash that Xander would would certainly want me to mention. I think is um, the whole upper torso is actually twisted. Mm. So he's more, mm. f- you know, marching, uh, sort of leg lunging forward kind of pose, you know. Yeah. He said, I think he said he assembled the, the guy and then just cut him in half, literally just to do this, <laughs> <laughs> or something to that effect. That is a very world eater's way to kit bash, honestly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. I cleaved him in twine to make him better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, I'm a big fan of the head swap. I don't know if that's uh, just an old school space green helmet or like an AOS one that's very similar or adjacent. But it isn't adds that a really nice just touch to it? I think. Oh, definitely. Uh, isn't it's that Archeon? the uh, chaos? Is that Archeon? Oh, I thought it was the chaos Terminator. Um, yeah, chaos Term- uh, sorcerer in Terminator armor. No, no, it's not. It's not the chaos sorcerer's head. It's uh, it's not Archeon's head either. Uh, although I do believe it. Is a slaves to darkness head of some kind. I think it's from the same. Actually, uh, I can't remember the axe. 
I think it's from the same kit that the axe is from. Not the not the not the eight bound axe or whatever mm. that big axe is on the le- on the on the left, his right. But the the other axe that's very clearly an AOS axe. I think those that that axe and that head are from the same kit. Oh yeah, that is. It might be from the Varengard Slaves to Darkness kit, the demonic riders of the Slaves to Darkness. Ooh. Maybe. Not yeah. sure. Someone someone let us know in the comments section where that head's from. I'm sure I'm sure most of you will recognize it because I certainly don't. Mm, might be the chosen, like the new ones. Hmm. Uh, what the kale? What, what for the slaves of darkness? Yeah. Oh yeah, they do have uh, chosen models, don't they? I forgot about mm. them. Might they're be. really cool. Yeah, they're really fucking cool. Right, gentlemen, shall we move on to today's main segment? Yes. Yeah, buddy. So for today's episode, we're going to take some time to talk about the perfect Warhammer movie. However, we're going to take this opportunity to talk about Warhammer uh, media and TV shows in general. You know, and and sort of explore the kind of things we can hope for in this regard. Uh, and so, yeah, what what do we think, guys? What what do we think? I am a huge uh, proprietor of the animated space. I oh yeah, I, I think honestly the best way to go about any 40k media is to animate it, because although we have wonderful technology and you know we can do all kinds of crazy shits with CGI live action isn't really there unless we go small scale unless we go yeah. something like uh Eisenhorn or uh, you know uh I mean even then you're still restricted because some Eisenhorn stuff does get real wacky mm, mm. yeah but yeah for sure but, but I mean we we can also let, let's uh, put it this way if we have something uh, we, we have an Eisenhorn style show, like in the style of, um, oh, what's that show about uh, where they, uh, um, carbon something, uh, they, uh, they, they have their, uh, minds implanted into, uh, little ships, carbon something. Altered carbon. Altered carbon. Yeah, exactly. Mm. You know, uh, yes. The one with, um, uh, the guy. Uh, there's oh, we are, we are great at this. Yeah, we are you great. Know, We're doing you know wonderful. That guy. That's, <laughs> the that, guy. that guy. That, that guy. Yeah. I know. The guy. <laughs> uh, Joel Kinnaman. Yeah. Joel Kinnaman. I'm just going to put a quick flash of Joel Kinnaman on the screen, some altered carbon stuff. Mm-hmm. The thing is, Joel Kinnaman, Joel Kinnaman, I feel like, was really underrated. And it's actually quite funny you say altered carbon, because he would do, in my humble opinion, he would do quite well in, a, in some Warhammer media. I agree. You know, he's got that kind of. He somehow looks youthful and haggard at the same time, <laughs> yeah. and that is that's kind of forty k all over, isn't it? Oh, you know, for sure. You know, you look strong, you look powerful, but you also look like you want to die. <laughs> so, you know, it's Dante in a nutshell. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, forehead, forehead, Dante casting right there. <laughs> Maybe, potentially. <gasps> Uh, mm. And not, that's not either to uh, ignore Anthony Mackie, who is also does a wonderful job in that show. Uh, honestly, Anthony Mackie, I uh, don't see a lot of people talking about him enough. He has uh, some very great uh, acting uh, skills, acting shops. He knows what he's doing. Who is that, sorry? Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie is um, the Falcon from Marvel. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, he's pretty cool. Funnily enough, a lot of people forget this, although uh, people who are into into rap, hip-hop, and um, also film and media won't will remember this, but a lot of people forget that in the uh, Eminem movie 8 Mile, Anthony Mackie plays the rapper he roasts in the rap battle at the end of the show, yep. at the end of the film. And if you look at him, he... Anthony Mackie's got one of those faces where he just doesn't age, man. No. He just he just looks he looks he still looks young. It's really weird because <laughs> he's like forty four. Yeah. <laughs> but no, to to go back to the original point, I feel like a animated space for um for Warhammer is honestly just mm-hmm. my dream uh project. Like I, I've said this before. Uh, I think in the uh, it was in the Q and A episode, uh, the the fucking uh, um, animated trailer for the Horus Heresy uh, mm. game. Whoever made that, whoever, whatever team, whatever person directed that, give them the budget to make <laughs> this into a full length thing. Because <laughs> god 
damn, I still watch that trailer from time to time and just get chills. Because well, I think I think you're absolutely right, but I think you also got to remember that the team who did that are almost certainly very small. Yeah. And even if they weren't small, the money involved for that trailer would have been ham. If we look at the kind of, I mean, I'm not. I don't mean to shit on GW. I really don't. But or maybe I do. But, maybe I do in red stead. <laughs> However, <laughs> honor. we know that when it comes to certain business practices that involve money and paying people, mm -hmm. GW are what we can call a bit of a Scrooge. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, you hear all the rumors about what their staff get paid, who simply run the stores. You heard the rumors about what their um, rules team get paid. Yeah, you know. These are people getting paid fuck all, allegedly. Yep. Um, and it's and it's it's not fun. It's no. not fun. And so you can take that and you can run with it. And you know that even though their advertising and marketing budget is going to be absolutely fucking phenomenal, it's still probably going to be. The, sorry, the, scratch that. The people receiving it are still going to think, "Hey, you stinge." Mm -hmm. You know. Um. I agree with you completely, though. I think animation is like fundamentally the way to go with this, and I think it's really sad because if we're going to mention Warhammer animation, there is one topic we have to talk about, mm -hmm. and that is how uh, how how Warhammer Plus has impacted the uh, the fanscape. Oh yeah, you know, uh, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want this episode to be negative, so we're going to speed through this. We're going <laughs> to really go through this, but it is unfortunate because we were doing it ourselves. Yes, you know. As a community, we were doing it ourselves. We could say, holy fuck, I'm so proud of the community I'm a part of because we were doing it ourselves. And now we can't. You know? Some of that stuff's been... I think some of that stuff's been overturned. I think some people are still producing some stuff. I've, I believe so, too. But uh, I, I've, I... Yeah. No. I, I can roast this. Um, people who follow me on Instagram know very well what I think of, <laughs> <laughs> of this. I have a lot of things I can say about this, but let's let's reserve it for... <laughs> that a little of... bit of an extremist. <laughs> Not to get political now. Mm. <laughs> 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 uh, nah, but uh, it's um, it's a crying shame. But uh, I uh, that's why I have hopes for this uh, Amazon show by uh, Henry Cavill. That mm. I I hope it is. I don't know. I I kind of hope it's animated, but as I. Also, kind of, in if since it's Amazon, since it's Henry Cavill, I almost actually I'll just to contradict myself here, mm. uh, wanted to be live action in some regard. May, maybe, but also maybe it's some part of the part of the project where it's going to be, you know, mul multiple things. You know, maybe you won't do just one thing or whatever. Who knows? But. Well we can very easily shit on the rings of power if we wanted to. <laughs> but we cannot pretend, none of us can pretend for a single second that the mix of CGI and live action in that show and the budget that backed it mm. wouldn't have been better served on a piece of Warhammer media. Definitely. Definitely. Mm. If they were willing to match that, I mean, and they're probably not, but let's say they were. Let's say they were willing to match that, or even two-thirds of that, that would be absolutely outstanding. That would be... You know, wham! Henry Cavill, uh, two billion dollar animation budget, CGI budget, whatever you want to call it, budget. Uh, if Henry Cavill's playing producer, so he will have a presumably as a as lead producer, he will have sorry lead or co. I can't remember, but he's produ he's a producer on it. Mm. Presumably, he will have some say in casting choices as well. Oh, definitely. And so he's basically been given the, the Warhammer fan golden ticket for this particular topic <laughs> we're talking about. You know? mm. the, uh, the, the real ticket to the chocolate factory. So <laughs> I, only hope, I only hope that when they basically be like, hey, Kev. Kev? Who's Kev? Kev. <laughs> get a Kevin Kev. Hart. Kev. 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 <laughs> Henry. Hey, Henry Kevin. <laughs> I just hope that when they when they're like, "Hey, Henry, you know, what do you think we should do here?" That they actually fucking 
listen to him and oh. not fuck it like they did The Witcher. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sweet Jesus. I have one major concern, and that's this isn't going to be for like pre-existing Warhammer fans. It's going to be a bit like The Witcher, oh, where no. it's for people to get into it more and be like, oh, that's really cool, but it's really inaccurate, but we don't know that. We're going to go buy a bunch of Warhammer or get into the lore mm. or get into it that way. And it's going to be more like an inaccurate intro rather than an actual pre-existing media for the like veterans or pre-existing sort of community members. That's my major concern. Is they're going to uh, fuck it real bad? Yeah. It's it's hard though. It's hard because I think the angle that Games Workshop is taking. I mean, this is entirely hypothetical, but I think the angle that they're taking is, oh look, Henry Cavill's doing it. We've got Henry. You know, people love Henry, and people do love Henry, especially <clears throat> Warhammer fans. <laughs> But people outside of the community love Henry as well, so it mm. might not be. It might just be a case of them relying on uh, his charisma. And mm. I know that's a hell of a bet, but I'd take that bet. Mm. Mm. It's not a bad shout, yeah. Yeah, I know my mum sure loves him, but that's <laughs> even <more> the <laughs> whole reason she watched The Witcher. Um, <laughs> With a cucumber? Question mark? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> but she could not give less of a fuck about The Witcher. She wasn't there for that. Uh, oh god! Did she pause with the uh, the hot the hot bath scene? <laughs> I wasn't there, man. I, I didn't want to be there. <laughs> don't, don't be asking me these questions, Chief, because I just don't know. Well, I don't I mean, know. I paused. I paused for the hot bath. Scene. I'm sure you did. Uh, I can see that. Aaron's mom during that scene reading like, mmm, Kev. Mm. <laughs> Kev. <laughs> <laughs> I think Aaron's mum and I need to trade some notes. <laughs> My sister's going to watch this and be like, what the fuck? So, <laughs> but important question. Getting back on topic here, boys. Yeah, getting back to it. Um, back to the importance. Uh-huh, what do we uh-huh. think slash hope it will be based in? Like 30k, 40k? <clears throat> Like, or do you think oh, it'll be it'll like forty k? Oh, it'll be forty k. It can't. It won't be heresy or anything like that. It will one hundred percent be forty k. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as much as I wish for like a list of band series, I don't think we're going to get that. It, oh, but that is an interesting question, though, and I think that kind of harkens back to my question: if it will be multiple projects, or if it's uh, you know like a cinematic universe of some sort, or if it's. Uh, Oh, I mean, I guess that depends on the success of this initial show. But well, everything's mm. everything's a pilot. Yeah, everything's a pilot. So they'll try this and they'll see how it goes. And if it's hyper successful, then yeah, they will. If it's not, then they won't. You know, I don't know. It. Uh, I, I suppose it all depends. And uh, I know I certainly would want to see more 30k. Uh, but likewise, I also Same, But yeah. I also understand that this is like. I, I don't, it's not necessarily true, but I think a lot of people getting into 40k first get into, well, 40k and find the like the, the accidentally or willingly deep dive into the lore kind of end up on the Horus Heresy eventually. Mm. But that, that's also to say that I also know that there are a lot of people who found, who found Warhammer through the Horus Heresy. You know, you, you can. You can get at this from many different angles. Yeah, I mean that's it. I mean, there's there's been actually many a time where Horus Hevis. Yeah, baby. There's been many a time. Hebe, hebe, hebe. I'm gonna cut this out. The 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 hebe hebe. No, the hebe the hebe hebe. The hebe 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 hebe. Oh yeah, let's go, Anthony. Let's go. No, I think. um There's been many a time when the Horus Heresy has actually different Horus Heresy novels have actually made it as New York Times bestsellers, you yeah. know, so you've got people who are, mm. oh, who, are yeah. who are into novels and have a very big respect for uh, creativity in English language picking up those novels and looking at them and, and having a good time, mm. you know um, and so, yeah the, the entrance points to the media are so vast, in fact, probably more vast than any other media period, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you've got you've got and uh, two new video games every year coming from you know each which way, loads of which are being updated. I mean, shit. Have you guys been keeping up with uh, Chaos Gate? No. no, still updating it. New DLC all the time. 
Actually, fuck that, Inquisitor Martyr. I don't even know how old that game is, and it's still <laughs> getting updates. Oh, really? For real? Jesus yeah. Christ. Yep. God damn. Yeah. I wasn't a big it's fan insane. of that game, but that's fucking nuts. Um, <laughs> you know, and so the, 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 the medium that is Warhammer, whether it's 40k, 30k, AOS, fantasy, old world, fucking blood bowl, <laughs> you know, it's, it's absolutely supreme. I mean, I'm sort of. I mean, I, I'll be honest. If since we're talking about 30k, though, I do want to flap for a bit. I am so, so excited for Legionnaires Imperialis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for Epic guys. Uh, yeah, it's you, gonna be good. He's fucking ejaculating over here. He's, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's fucking <laughs> cooling. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to draw you as a fucking coomer and <laughs> have you post it in this fucking the juice. podcast. You, I need you to make a Kuma Wojak just holding a Titanicus warlord. Please. Kuma Wojak, please. Thank you. Much appreciated, Moots. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, but I mean, fuck, just. I mean, I, I understand your hype for that because, I mean, or, well, I'm, I'm, I probably won't play it but like it's just you know i i can just see the fucking the just thinking of the titans in that uh, trailer and like how fucking powerful they are yeah like just when the oh when it just just goes there's just yeah oh, i'm just kicking out <laughs> I'm gonna but add it's sound effects to your sound effects <laughs> yeah, yeah, please do <laughs> mm. <laughs> and in the fucking S- war sweet, horn sweet. in the background oh yeah Oh, Swedish powered sound effects over here. <laughs> if any of our, if any of our lovely and wonderful audience have been keeping up with our shorts, they may have noticed a slight little increase in shorts about titans and night houses lately. <laughs> um, that is because that is. I'm really sorry, guys. That is because of my <laughs> solely because of my growing interest in Titanicus uh, and Imperialis Epic and 30k. <laughs> you know, I found out some really wacky shit, and this is this is actually it comes back to what we're talking about in a really wonderful way as to why we are not ready for a Warhammer TV show or movie. Mm-hmm. There is a scene during the Battle of Kalth, I believe, which is obviously when the word bearers betray the Ultramarines. Yeah, right. On the planet is the entirety of a knight household called House Von Hare, and they're with uh, some of Von Hare is with Legio Prosagius. And for anyone that doesn't know, a knight household are those sort of little walker mechs, and a uh, titan legio are the big walker mechs. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, my throat, guys. I'm gonna cut this out. <laughs> my fucking throat is fucked. <laughs> I knew there was a good reason why I couldn't do this shit in the fucking morning. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like someone's dad. You know that where you wake up and your dad's like, and your dad just goes, <laughs> <laughs> rumbles the whole fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's just like it's just, happy, it's just he does that, and he's fine, and it's like, and you look at him like, what's up, Dad? And he's like, what do you mean, what's up? What the fuck are you talking about? What are you amazing, Dad? Man? You, Dad, you sound like a fucking smoker from Left for Dead. What's going on, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I can clip this. <laughs> Clips the fat, like fucking oh. fattest loogie you've ever seen to man and have been like nothing. Like, what's happening, guys? Oh, I remember. Goodness. I remember. However many years ago it was now, I was living with my dad, and I literally one day I, I literally woke up because of that. <laughs> and I did. I came out of the room. And I was thinking, oh. Like, oh no, dad's 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 ill. Something's wrong. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the smoking's got to him. Blah 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 blah. Run down the stairs, go into the living room, and he's just sat in the. He's just sat uh, in his armchair with a knife and an apple, and he's just cutting the apple. Open. I'm like, Dad, what was that? I like, what was what? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just get. I'll just get rid of some phlegm. <laughs> just ejecting some phlegm. Nothing out of the ordinary. And you gotta keep in mind, this hit the same sort of decibel levels as a jumbo jet. <laughs> you know, my bed, my bed vibrated. <laughs> Fuck. Oh god, you please don't clip this out, this is amazing. <laughs> Anyways, dads, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, what what I was talking about, I had a really great uh, little point to make. So I, I gotta uh, finish. I gotta finish because like health, I know yeah. the yeah, yeah. I know that Croc's watching, and Croc will kill me if I don't finish because it's one of his favorite scenes in the entirety uh, of the Horus Heresy. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> so House Warnhair are like priming to battle the um the word bearers at Kelth. Uh alongside Legio Presagius. And they're this really big rousing speech from the Seneschal of the house. And she's she gives them this really sort of motivational but though we may die, blah 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 blah. Our aims will echo for all eternity, blah 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 blah. Whatever. Um and they never fight anyone because the word bearers descend their battle bars from the atmosphere and blacken the sky with a payload of thousands of atomic bombs. <laughs> <laughs> and the entire night household gets turned to glass. Jesus. There's a great scene that happens where, because you know, knights and titans can go underwater, like in the ocean, and be absolutely mm. fine. Yeah. There's this really great scene because some of House of Ornhair was in the ocean mm. at the time. And they're talking about how the ocean is around them, is boiling and bubbling, and oh. it's it's lowering, it's shrinking, it's coming down to them because it's boiling above them. Holy and shit. these guys are just in their tight in their nights and they're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> Holy shit. And they get they get out of the ocean eventually, walk out of the sea. And they walk out of the sea several miles before the point where they should have been able to walk out of it because it's just been drained that much by the nuclear fire. Holy shit. And as soon as they get outside, they just see a group of word bearers. And it's implied that they're then killed by the word the word bearers with some warp bullshittery. Uh, I mean, this is the kind of shit that can only happen in a novel. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How the fuck is TV going to replicate a, a <laughs> part of a planet being totally <laughs> obliterated by nuclear fire, the seas boiling, and having motherfuckers under the ocean watching it happening? Yeah. God damn. You know? Yeah. It's well, not... it can be free. It can be free. Free the animated. We have the technology. Hey, 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 if if Christopher Nolan can make Oppenheimer and not use any CGI. <laughs> mm. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the technology is there. We, we developed nukes a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they should do. Live action, live action battle of Kel. I don't know where we're going to set the nukes up, but we're going we're gonna to we'll find somewhere, you know. Find yeah, another planet, we'll go. be fine. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, no, but uh, it's an, that's an interesting uh, uh, point, and uh, I c- guess it kind of brings back to the point that I think what it should be the for for starters is a very low. I won't say down to earth. It's a sci-fi series, but you know, it's lo- down to earth um, show, probably about an inquisitor or something. Uh, maybe in, like investigating a uh, planet. Just be as much as in one place as possible. Would you? Would you like my estimate for what it will be? Oh, for sure. The the, the Cavill show. Yeah. It will be a murder mystery, mm. and the murderer will be unveiled to be one of two things: gene stealers or chaos. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be in a hive city somewhere. The person who's going to get murdered isn't going to be hive scum because no one gives a fuck about hive scum. It'll be an imperial official or a lord or noble. Yeah. They'll get killed uh, and dismembered and strung up on walls and it'll be made to look like chaos. And the plot twist will be it was actually gene stealers who tried to make it look like chaos to like throw them off the scent. Yeah. You know, I mean, mm. if we think about 10th edition, how 10th edition's going, GW have this really funky habit of centering everything they're doing around their current um, playbook of Warhammer. And their current playbook right now is Tyranids. Yeah. And the only thing that comes before Tyranids is Gene Stealers. Yep. Exactly. Well, it's it's, fu- it's, it's funny you say that because I, I was going to make the exact same point. I think this is exactly where it's going as well. Yeah, I mean, it feels obvious, and I would love it if they subverted these expectations of mine and just went, nah, fuck it. We're going to invest more money than we've ever done, and we're going to do the Horus Heresy. Yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love that. I mean, it would be, be terrible. They'd never be able to do it, but like, I'd, be, I'd be totally hot on their shit for giving it a go. Yeah, God, you know, I hope so. That'd be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It, I don't know. It's a hard one, because how do you balance how do you balance your expectations of something that could be so wonderful and epic with something that's just, you know, knowing it's not possible. <clears throat> I, I'm having a really hard time uh, compiling these two things together, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not an easy one. Um, I was thinking, actually, uh, quite funnily enough, that one of the two things I'd be okay with if it wasn't 30k would be something akin to, like, 
an inquisitorial series with Henry Cavill as the big sort of inquisitor because that'd be funny oh yeah or, um, that's what we're saying yeah. that's what we're saying it will be it'll be dead body murder mystery dead body looks chaos affiliated in, you know because of that inquisitor gets summoned summoned from the order hereticus and holy shit we need the order fucking xenos mm-hmm. mm. you know and cavill will be somewhere in that mm. i was thinking hopefully a bit more sort of wide scale like interplanetary sort of shenanigans but um is either that maybe some sort of like kill team following perhaps with some marines I'd be sort of close to oh, these two characters there's, going there's, along. There's no way. There is. I'm, I'm really sorry. Quote me on this. There is no way in hell. Um, to anyone listening, I'm really sorry. <laughs> there is no way in hell. You just, I'm, I'm, I'm preparing everyone's uh, expectations. Uh-huh. This is for everyone's benefits, so that we all hear this all on the same page. There is no way in hell that any space marines are in the Cavill TV show. It is simply not going to happen. If there are Space Marines, it will take up the majority of their budget to do a very quick scene of a Space Marine just being on camera as part of like a, like part of a, um, a procession or something, you know? <clears throat> but it will not regularly include Space Marines. It's simply not going to happen. So if anyone's got expectations of that, adjust them now. You know, <laughs> save yourself some stress later on. You'll be okay. Just don't expect Space Marines. This this is where I throw you this curveball. How about well, they just have a Astartes, someone out, out of armor, just at some point. Maybe he, during his time, this Inquisitor, uh, Kev, Mr. Kev here, is uh, going down into the Underhive. And he finds a, a, a Astartes at some point. Just a giant of a man who's... Uh, that's not so hard to do. We've done the giant, ti- giant man, tiny man, uh, everything in between a normal man. I don't know. <laughs> you know I, I mean, first off, i gotta, I got to speak for the fucking... For the, the nerds. Uh-huh. The fucking nerds who are like, why would there be an Astartes randomly in the Underhive? Mm-hmm. They're right. There wouldn't be. But let's say there is going to be a giant man. You and I both know it's going to be an Ogryn. <laughs> Why would they have a space room where they can have an ogre? Like, oh, Jimmy, Commissar Jim. Oh, yeah. I love you, man. I, uh, get the fuck off me, you giant brute. <laughs> my name's oh, Gregor. Jim, I love how you fucking stick up for my. You know, it's just that's. The, it, it's not going to be a. Why would you have a space room where you can have a comedic god that's nine yeah. feet tall wandering around, you know? Uh, uh, okay, I see your point. I see your point. Uh, I don't know. I, I was I was thinking something, you know, the uh, strange, uh, uh, miss, you know, the 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 stranger trope, I suppose. Uh, big big fellow. Oh, the I don't know. You, you you could do whatever the fuck you want with him. Maybe maybe you could throw theories about where he's from. Maybe he's an alpha legionnaire. Maybe he's uh, just an old well, space marine who uh, the only fucked way... off and whatever. In my mind, the only way that a space marine could work as a singular dude who's a very low-key plot device, like you're describing, mm. would be a Fallen. Mm. You know? Because mm. uh, Fallen space marines act solo more than anyone else. Yeah. And get, you know, I mean, you can say Alpha Legionaries do, but Alpha Legionaries don't get fucking caught whilst they're doing it. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the Fallen do. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not unheard of to find a Fallen Chaos space marine uh, fucking about, you know. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's an expectation. That maybe if they're gonna include a space marine, something like that. I think something mm. that would be if we if if I was gonna say if someone was gonna say to me, Tom, there's definitely gonna be space marines in it, and I had to describe the capacity they would be in. It would be like that scene from um. I'll put it on the screen now, but it's the scene from the the the. I can't remember what the animation's called. I'm so sorry, but you know the Milky Way Galaxy sweep edit. Huh? No. Oh my god, guys, please. <laughs> the fucking it all right, so you got I'll put I'm actually just gonna put the Milky Way Galaxy edit uh, Galaxy Sweep edit on the fucking thing. I just the third fleet expansion bit. Oh no. No, you 
plebeian. It's the um, <laughs> it's it's like on the screen. It's like three new, four news articles. Scientists think there's aliens in the galaxy. Oh, t- forty thousand aliens discovered across the galaxy. Uh. Science, da, da, da. And then it jokes to a black screen. You got this super hard fucking synth. Uh, La Castlevania's freak. Oh yeah. And then it's the Space Marines walking down the procession with you know imperial oh, yeah. fists and dreadnoughts and the Inquisitor. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. That's Come the on, one. guys. You know you know about the galaxy, <laughs> the, the Milky Way galaxy sweep, guys. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know, no, I know. <laughs> I put it. I would put it on the screen behind. Us. I will, but I'm gonna have to take the audio out because I'll get fucking. We'll get latched Ooh. if I leave the original audio in. Whipped. <laughs> Yeah, can't do it, boys. No, <laughs> it ain't happening. <laughs> I posted it in the Discord last night because Wolf seems to think. Well, I say Wolf seems to think. Wolf has reason to believe that we're now about to be told the truth about aliens <laughs> from the U.S. government. And my first response, my first, instantly, my brain was like Milky Way Galaxy Sweep. Let's go. <laughs> like, I think that's the point of the meme. I think it might be the point of the meme. Uh, probably, probably. <laughs> 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 I I do hope that the uh, the show the the show by our dear Kev doesn't <laughs> end up sucking ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can only hope it doesn't suck. We can only hope it doesn't suck. Was... Sorry, I got I got I got backtrack for a second. Mm-hmm. Talking about the thing that Wolf was talking about. I'm I'm sorry, everyone, going off track again. <laughs> UA, UAPs. I can't remember what UAP stands for, but someone in the comments will tell me. But um. I'm just saying, if Xenos are real, I demand Chaos is real as well. I demand <laughs> the war be real too. I demand this. As per our Chaos Gods app, I have praising I need to do, and I wish for the rewards right now. You know? <laughs> this, this, whole oh alien, <laughs> this whole alien thing is reminding me of a, a thing I saw where it was like, yeah, me and my friends would have beaten E.T. of Hammers if we found him. And uh, that's <laughs> really, that's, f- that's really very true what? right about now, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why would you do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just think about it, man. <laughs> it doesn't take much Why would I choose to do that? Beat ET with hammers. He's some sort of fucking animal. I mean, he definitely didn't know who was, like, what he was, and he just came up to start trying to poke you with his fucking glowy finger. You'd clock that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that fucking fucker. thing yeah. touching you. It looks yeah. like a yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. it looks like a deep fried bull sack, right? With a glowy finger. You don't know what he's gonna do to you. It's a fight or flight response, man. Phone. <laughs> Et if it was set in Croydon. <laughs> yeah. Et phone the police. I wouldn't give that motherfucker like skittles. I'd fucking give him lead. Is what I'd fucking give him. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, a lead fucking pipe. Lead fucking pipe, because we can't do anything else here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Corey T. Oh, Christ. He got real fucking lucky, that's what I'm saying. Rip the, oh, yeah. Rip the <laughs> little motherfucker. <laughs> Get that fucker next right, time. Right, gentlemen, let's look at drawing this to a close. Uh, Unless, oh. of course, you have anything else you wanted to talk about. Oh, please, please, sweet mother of... Uh, uh, chaos, Mr. Kev, <laughs> as you are now Mr. better, Kev, yeah. as you are now better known, <laughs> Henry Kevill, <laughs> Henry Kevill, Big Kev man, listen to me, Kev, Kev. Oh, boy, Big Kev. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm, I'm just saying, a uh, Primark romcom. There we have it. <laughs> Moots. No. <laughs> what the fuck, Moots. <laughs> <laughs> get, get, this, get this fucking guy out of here, man. <laughs> there is there is no denying. To be fair, there is no denying. I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna annoy some people with this, but I don't care. There is no denying the sheer volume of homoerotic subtext <laughs> across the entire set. There is so much of it. That's why it's unspoken. It doesn't uh, need to be spoken. It's all over the place. Sub- subtext, it's plain text. <laughs> you know, subtext is plain to see, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm happy Red isn't here. He would have flaved me by now. <laughs> I think all of us might have been. If Red was here, I think all of us might have been killed for slightly different but equally <laughs> blasphemous reasons yeah, by now. Yeah. 
That's very all, true. All equally valid, but equally different reasons, yeah. <laughs> right, gentlemen, <laughs> let's draw this to a close. Oh. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and we hope to see you next time. Yeah, comment below what you would like to see mm. in, in, in the TV mm. show, or kind of show you would like to see. Or, or film. Movie. Or movie, yes. Or movie, yes. or uh, radio show. <laughs> oh, I would <laughs> see a bl- <laughs> You know... <laughs> A oh, pictogram. A oh, pictogram, yeah. I well, want a, I want a blatant t- uh, alien rip-off of Tyranids and Lictors. That's what I want. <gasps> oh, uh, you know yeah. what? If they do rip that off, if they, like, pure rip that off, that would, wouldn't even be bad. I wouldn't even no, be bad, No yeah. problem with that at all. Not a single <laughs> problem with that at all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. 100%. Oh. Right, take it easy, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you next time. Yeah, bye-bye. 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 Bonsoir, mes chéris. Comment ça va? I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like the podcast and you want to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like and comment. Oh, and while you're at it, feel free to follow us on our social medias, like Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Finally, join us over at our Discord and talk with me and the other free gits. Alright then, please take care and see you next time. Au revoir.